this, so now we're going to come down to some humans that I know. Uh, these are two humans that I know very well. This is Peggy Rathman and her husband, John Wick. They bought a ranch in Marin about 20 years ago. Uh, they immediately kicked all the cows off and decided they were going to return it to wilderness. No cows, no people, done. They watched in horror as their ranch turned into a weedy patch of invasive species. They lost their grasslands and the scrub took over. John is a, a master engineer and builder, and he uh, hired 300 people to weed for a month out of the year. And then he bought big machines and he mowed everything down. And then they sprayed it. They spent two years spraying it with chemicals, trying to kill all the weeds. And then they decided, finally, none of this was working. Maybe they would get some goats. So they brought some goats out. And it turns out the goats were too expensive. But there was a guy in the truck with the goats who was like, did you know that up on the hillside you have a patch of some grass I can't pronounce, but it's a very important native species? And John was like, no, we didn't know this. No one's ever told us that something good was happening on our ranch. And, and this man, his name was Jeffrey Creek, is a rangeland ecologist. He said, yeah, in fact, it's a really, really good patch of grass. Maybe you should think about managing for its health, about supporting it. So they're like, oh, this is a novel idea. And it changed their entire approach to the way they managed their ecosystem. Um, they got really into holistic grazing. They brought out Ellen Savory. They bought three yeoman's plows. They did the whole thing. John put up 200 paddocks across his entire um, ranch. And they thought they were sequestering carbon in the soil from their grazing. In 2008, the state of California passed a law, uh, their cap and trade law, and it created money for carbon. And they wanted to get some of that money for carbon sequestration in their land. So they asked this question, can my grazing management increase my soil carbon? Um, this is an important question, and I think by and large we can say that yes, this can happen. Um, but what they found was that it actually wasn't happening on their property. So they invested all of this money into this idea. Um, they found some scientists who were willing to come out and take a look at it. And uh, it turns out that their rangelands were losing carbon, even after having been grazed really well, even after the wildflowers came back. They looked great. Turns out they were still losing carbon. So unlike, instead of holding on, they just were like, OK, great. So what is, what is sequestering carbon? They did a literature review, and they compared science for grazing management practices across 30 ranches in Marin, where they're from. They, they were willing to learn from their failure. And what they found was that it didn't matter what was going on grazing-wise. I mean, of course, it did for erosion. But for long-term soil carbon pools, what mattered was that places that had manure applied historically had up to 10 times more carbon in the system than places that didn't. Well, it makes a lot of common sense to us. But science at the time didn't think that a topical application of carbon in any form could cause a carbon pool to increase over time. So they changed their question. And they said, well, what if we ask this question? And they did. So two things to start here. Peggy's family is, um, uh, started Amgen, which is one of the biggest biotech companies. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. It's an older one. And I think she's spent, dedicated her life to trying to ameliorate the issues that that, that company created. Um, John's a project manager, so he does everything from a project management standpoint. Peggy's in science. So they found the best, one of the best scientists they could in the field, and they decided, you know, we're going to do this thing so that it's replicable and scalable, and we're going to start with a pilot project. And once we have a pilot, we're going to do a demonstration. And if that demonstration works, then we can save the whole world, right? <laughs> this was their idea. Um, well, what happens in between is this little thing called the Valley of Death. This is like a Silicon Valley, you know, moving from entrepreneur up. So I'm going to take you through what they did because I hope that there are some examples in here that might be useful for what you all are looking at. 